Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to take the brand new Holystone HS720G out for its test flight. Now, if you're subscribed to my channel, you probably saw I just posted the day before here the unboxing overview for this drone. So if you stumbled across this video and you didn't see that, then be sure to check back to that video. I'll try to put a card up here to that as well. So if you want to see everything that comes with it, including the really nice carrying case that it comes with, then be sure to check out that video. Now this drone goes on sale on Amazon on March 30th. So this video may be posted a bit prior to that. So if you're interested in this drone, I'll put a purchase link to that in the video description and probably a pinned comment as soon as it becomes available on Amazon. And be sure to use the code. I'm going to have a 5% off code that will drop this drone probably in the, the 285 range, I'm guessing, which will make it one of the cheaper uh, gimbal drones that you can buy out there. So let's really hope that this thing does well today so that we can justify that price. So we're gonna get it up in the air, fly it around, test it out, and we'll film in 4K at 30, though it, I did notice in the app, and I'll show you guys in a moment, it does have a 1080p at 60 frame per second option, which is really nice if you want that really smooth playback. So I'm gonna pause the video, power it up, we'll bind it to the app, and then do the compass calibration, and then get this drone up in the air, so I'll be right back. Hey guys, I wanted to cut into the video here real quick. Give you guys an update obviously i was able to review the footage on the drone and there's a few things i just want to let you guys know so you know better explain what's going on during the actual flight review that's coming up here um you'll notice that there's a few times during this review that i completely lose the wi-fi connection to the from the drone to my phone it just completely it does it's not that the app uh disconnects which some of those drones would do the Wi-Fi just disappears. It's gone from the Wi-Fi list on my phone. I have to restart the drone. So that happens two times in the video. And when that happens, the app says it's disconnected. When the app says it's disconnected, then you don't really have the controls to like tell it to stop, to start or stop recording. And I'm recording video. Now, there's a few instances where that happens. And I say, okay, well, maybe I might lose the footage that I'm saving to the SD card because I can't tell it to stop and then it corrupts. But then in the final clip that I record to the drone, I'm flying it at the time and I tell the app to stop recording just to be safe so that I know that the footage is actually saved to the SD card. And then I go take a few photos after that. And none of, what I'm going to get into is none of that footage is on the SD card. Nothing. So even whenever I told it to stop recording and I know that the Wi-Fi didn't disconnect, there's no footage on the car. There's just one five second clip while it's sitting on the helipad that recorded at some point. And I'll put that up here right now so you guys can see what that looks like. That is actually 4K at 30 frames per second. And it looks really, really good. But that's all I got to record. So the two big issues with this drone, the Wi-Fi disconnects randomly. And then I couldn't get any, you know, only one five second clip to actually save to the SD card. So moving forward, when we get back outside to the, to the actual flight review again, is I'm gonna have the screen recording going, and then off to the other side, I'll have some footage that's supposed to be the onboard footage, but it's actually footage that was saved to the camera. So instead of 4K at 30, it's like 720p at like 24 frames per second. That's the only onboard footage I actually have. I also have the photos I took, which are also saved to the phone, but again, that's all saved over Wi-Fi. So keep in mind that the actual footage that we would have from the SD card is going to be far superior, but it didn't say. So at the end of this video, I said that I give this drone a passing grade, but it wasn't perfect. Um, it's a little harder to, to say that at this point because I don't know if that's going to happen to you. If the SD card saves fine and you have no Wi-Fi issues, then this is a wonderful drone because the camera, the gimbal works great. I mean, the gimbal is great from what I could tell. Um, for a drone of this class, I should say. It's great might be a little bit over the top, but it's really good is what I'm getting at. But I can't say for certain that this is going to be a worthwhile purchase for you because I don't know if you're going to have the Wi-Fi issues. And even if you don't, is your SD card going to work? I was using a 32 gig SanDisk Extreme card. And that should be a really good card. It's well beyond class 10. And again, I just had a five second clip that you guys just saw. So that's all I can really tell you guys. Um, I just wanted to, to interject this in before we get out there and actually fly so to better explain what's going to happen because I, all that stuff I didn't actually know when I was flying. Uh, I didn't. I knew the Wi-Fi disconnected, but I obviously did not know 
that the SD card was not having any footage safe. But. All right, guys, let's get on outside now and, and wrap up the actual flight review. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I have it connected to the app. That app, again, is the Ophelia Fly app. I'll put a screenshot up here so you guys can see that app that you need to use with this. And I have it connected with the controller. So the first thing you need to do is the compass calibration. There's a little symbol. Looks like a quadcopter flashing here. If it doesn't initiate that, it, the instruction manual doesn't say that it'll do it every time, but so far for me it has. So it may force you to do a compass calibration every time, which is fine. But if, if you need to redo it, and say it's toilet bowling or something, it'd be both sticks down and to the right will actually start that up manually. You can also do it from with the app. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll go quickly through the app stuff here, and then we'll get it up in the air. So let's go ahead and set this down. And what we're, we're going to do is we're just going to spin the the drone like this three times I don't think it's gonna beep and then we need to go in your nose up or nose down a few times and then we did get a beep confirmation that we were finished and hopefully the gimbal will calibrate itself now let's make sure that we have some gimbal tilt now here we go so the gimbal now it's kind of sort of deactivates itself during the compass calibration so you don't mess the gyro up by wobbling around as you're spinning it all right and let's look at the app real quick and then let's get it up in the air so up in the gear icon here you can go between metric and british i'm going to go with the imperial just i'm a little more familiar with it beginner mode is actually off usually that comes on uh orbit is the orbit or radius for the circle me mode or point of interest mode we'll just leave it at the default 16 feet you've got um, your maximum distance i have sort of set to infinity it's only going to go a few hundred meters anyway well actually, there i'm using the metric and then maximum height is set to 393 that keeps us under the 400 feet ceiling that i'm you're restricted to here in the united states and then you've got lift height i guess you can i'm not sure i have to look and see i have a hard time reading that in the glare that could be something to do with the height on takeoff and we have 49 feet for our return to home altitude i'm going to set that up a little bit more well like let's go up to let's go like 78 is fine and then you've got another sensor status this is where you can do your geomagnetic or your compass calibration let's get out of that the excuse me determine is telling it sending the those updated parameters to the drone and over here you have some camera options and you can see brightness saturations and different effects your iso we have an auto your white balance you can set that to different presets i'll leave it on auto then you click this one down here and there's where you can change between 4k at 30 and 1080p at 60. we're going to do 4k at 30 since i'm filming with my osmo in 4k to keep everything the same resolution Though I'm filming this at 60 and this will be at 30, but that'll look fine. But 1080p at 60 will give you a much smoother playback if, you, if that's important to you, especially for fast movement. Some cache frame number, I'm not sure what that is. There you can format the SD card and then you can do a gimbal calibration. Not That's not the drone, that's actually for the gimbal if you need to calibrate. I already did that inside on my table where it was level. And you can also do a gimbal roll adjust for like making some offsets if the gimbal would be off we don't know that yet since we have not actually flown this drone so let's start recording some video with the long press and it wants to make sure we have access to the internal storage i'm going to stop it again i think we see a, a recording button so it was working so let's go ahead and start it up again and now we're recording and let's go ahead and get this drone up in the air and see how it does so let's go ahead and do the unlock there we go. Not sure what was up with that. Let's try it again. There we go. Well, I was pressing it, it wasn't going. Let's go ahead and do auto takeoff. That was kind of strange. I kept pressing it and it was just beeping at me. I don't know. Hard to say, but it's working now. Maybe I was being impatient. It's a little breeze today, but boy, that's super steady. Now there is an optical flow camera on the bottom of this, but that shouldn't be used right now um, because it's probably not using that along with the uh, GPS it only uses it if it loses it now this is a low rate we can do a let's see if the yaw changes when I go and hold this to the high rate yes the yaw gets quicker it's not super windy today so I'm gonna go back to the low rate that's gonna help with filming 
Well, that's really nice and stable. Let's hope that gimbal looked pretty good to me inside, but that can be tricky. Let's yaw that around at me and let's lower. Let's see if I bring this down. You guys should be able to see me here. Let's go. Let's go up here. And let's try to tilt the gimbal down. Well, looks like that we got it. We got a fro. Right, now I can see we're not connected. So let's go over here and land it. I don't know what's going on now. That's not a good sign whenever we get that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and land it. I was the glare was kind of throwing me off. So let's go ahead and go back in the app. Try entering it again. It says we are not connected. I didn't pay attention. Of course, the drone was looking the wrong way there. Let's go ahead and go back in. And it still says that we are not connected. So let's go back. And let's go back in and make sure that we are connected to the Wi-Fi. And make sure for some reason it didn't disconnect on us. It says, yeah, we're connected back to my home internet. Now, that is not good. Let's make sure it pops back up here. And I'm not seeing it. So let's try refreshing again. All right, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to pause the video and get this reconnected. But that is not a good start to the video. All right, guys, I have it reconnected now. Let's get it back up in the air. I'm, I'm worried because when something like that happens, lots of times it becomes symptomatic and you end up with over and over and over. And then you end up with an unusable Wi-Fi feed. Let's go ahead and try unlocking it again. There we go. And let's, let's make sure we start some video again. I didn't... There we should, we should be recording. Let's go ahead and do an auto takeoff. I, I doubt we had any video there at the beginning. We'll see. Because the video froze. We're in low speed. Let's go ahead and turn it around now. So far, so good. Let's go ahead now, and that's why I was having trouble while ago. I couldn't see me because I was looking at the wrong way, and I'm so focused on talking that I'm not even paying attention. I was looking at the wrong direction in the app. Okay, let's go ahead and do like a, a manual droney here, like Marcus always does. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, a little bit too much elevation there. There we go. Okay. Let's just slide around a little bit. Again, I'm just in low rate. Let's just make sure this, I just hope this FPV feed stays good. That's my biggest concern now. Just gonna ease it around. I'm just trying to do some cinematic flying here. Keeping it close here to make sure that we have a good feed. Again, think of recording to the SD card. I'm gonna go up in the rates because here we go. That's a little sportier. <clears throat> because even though this is slowest rates ideal for for um, filming, it's really slow to turn and stuff. Okay, let's. Uh, so far, the gimbal looks pretty good. Now it's not always easy for me to tell while I'm flying here. Um, outside with a glare if there's actually any issues with the gimbal but again we have eis working on top of this let's just take this out of ways way up over the cemetery we're out at 128 30 feet we're not going to go too far this is not a range test and we have to keep it within line of sight guys here in the u.s go out a little ways i have a nice feed so far let's hope that that wi-fi issue wasn't was just a glitch we're gonna get it out about we're out around 500 feet there. It's getting a little harder for me to see. I can still see it. My eyes aren't the greatest. So let's just go ahead. That's where I usually call these drones back. The feed's really good. I'm not seeing a bunch of lag. Let's go ahead and call it back home. Let's see, is it gonna come back? Or maybe maybe I need to do a long. Well, I think it's raising up now, so I think it's doing it. If not, I'll oh, long press it. Yeah, so please pay attention to the wind speed. Yeah, it's coming back. I think I had it set at what, so it's at 78 feet or something like that. I always like to do this while we have good battery power. 
and here it comes just to see how close it is to landing on the pad we're not gonna be perfect and that's fine but we want to get it reasonable within a reasonable you know few feet is ideal the Sun I'm not gonna look up guys the Sun is right up high now it's just gonna blow out the camera so once it gets down low enough here here we go let's see how this does <clears throat> It's going to be off a little but this is about what you'd expect you know a few feet and that's perfectly fine yeah that's 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 a good return on that return to home and this is a very a very small um helipad so it's you know this is smaller than some of the other ones too so that may throw it off let's go ahead and unlock it and get it back up in the air again let's just do a manual takeoff it's really dark set when you give it full throttle and it did it freeze yep all right the, after we landed there look the video feed froze i don't know if i'm going to be able to stop recording now let's that did that did stop recording and then it said not connected <laughs> let's just bring it back over here this is not good it worked really well there but i'm a little concerned i mean the fact that we're losing this wi-fi and why did it do it after it landed like that? Let's go ahead and try to manually land it. And as you guys can see on screen recording, we've got a, a frozen video. So, all right, guys, so I got it connected again. This is, like I said, unfortunate because even though it worked really well there, it's the second time it's dropped off. And when it drops off, I can't just open, close the app, reopen it. It's the Wi Fi feed is completely dropping out for me now. Is, can I say for certain that this is going to happen to you? No, I, it could just be some fluke thing with me, but I can only tell you my experience. Otherwise, I love the drone. It flies great. And from what I can tell, the video looked really good. We, I can't say for certain until I get it inside and view it. You know, if there's some real obvious problems, I'll put some text overlay pointing it out. But as what I, what I saw looked good. So it could come down to the fact that the Wi-Fi issues could be the only problem with this drone, which is a pretty big problem. So let's go ahead now and start recording some video again. Um, if it ends up that there's no onboard video, only my screen recording, that's because both instances where the Wi-Fi dropped out, I may have lost the recordings, even though it did seem to stop the last time, even though the uh, feed was frozen. It seemed like there was some connection to the app possibly, but I don't know if that's possible. If the Wi-Fi was gone, it wouldn't be. So let's go ahead and, and unlock the props. And do an auto takeoff again. So we are recording video. What I want to do now is just test out that follow me mode and the uh, point of interest before we wrap up this video. But overall, this thing flies well and the gimbal seems pretty good. I don't see, let's look it off this way here, take it up a little ways. Um, there's some natural slope there. Let's look off this way. I'm looking for any kind of slope in the gimbal and there may be a little bit it looks to me like it may be leaning a little to the left but it's, now that way it looks pretty good now sometimes that's the gimbal straightening out but it doesn't look bad that's pretty good again i think there's maybe a little slope as you guys may see and there's that gimbal roll adjustment if it always does that we can fix that in the app And also, I was, you know, this is not the most level ground. Even I did a gimbal calibration, it's possible that, uh, you know, when it started up, that it didn't get a good level because of the surface. Let's go to the high rate. Uh, I guess maybe I was already in the high rate. Let's, yeah, there we go. We already were in it. I'm surprised it kept that since I had powered it off. Now, let's, let's aim that gimbal down at me a little bit here. They say you need to be back a little ways. I don't remember the exact distance, but you can't do the follow me up super close. Let's let's park it. That's probably a little too close. Let's hope the speed stays good. It was weird that it landed and did that, but then the first time I was in the air and it dropped out. Okay, let's go into the smart features and let's just do follow me. Slide that little lever, or the little slider over, I should say. And there it's sort of moving itself and finding me. Let's just see if it follows me. First, it ought to just yaw, I would think. And I'm, 
it's backing up but look at this let's let's correct it if i can now it's not letting me so instead of yawing over here i am let's let's see if i there it's floating over but it should yaw on its axis while it locates me and then it should move and at first there it didn't let's see it may get better and it is following me now so it seems to be working okay though as you guys saw it did let me move out of the uh field of view there the first time but yeah it is it is it is moving and it is working so not bad not perfect but not bad and this following me pretty nice it's it's not doing a bunch of rocking it's a little bit but that gimbal is going to help smooth that out there we go it's following me now i'm getting close to the edge let's turn this way and see does it yaw or is it gonna let me walk out of range <laughs> and there's i'm walking out of let's see if it turns around and turns at me because right now you guys can see it's out of the i'm out of the field of view now it's turning so maybe it could also be i was a bit close now it's found me so like i said it does work a little bit of a, of a quick movement there as you can see the sudden adjustment that's not super smooth but it does work i've seen much worse okay let's go ahead and press that mode and exit out of it so yeah it works it's not perfect i've seen worse but i've also seen better of course if you were going to get something like a dji mavic uh a mini se i should say they don't call it mavic anymore it's not going it's going to be perfect so keep that in mind the thing is is not everybody is going to use uh following mode in fact i've only used it a few times on my good drones ever i just don't have a reason to use it but if you do obviously this is not perfect let's take it up now and back it up i'm going to tilt the gimbal down a little bit here at us here it's a little bit of delay lag with the gimbal but it's relatively smooth and let's go into that point of interest we're just going to slide it and i think it's just going to start going from there you don't really this is a simple kind you just take it up over the object and it's just going to start circling that point using that preset radius inside the settings of the app that's a that's a nice circle me a point of interest that's perfect I actually prefer this kind some of them, the ones that are more specific you have to fly them up on some of the drones mark the center move it out that's fine but boy it can get difficult and sometimes they don't always want to work really well this is a much more basic but i like this and then of course we have the headless mode in there which i'm not going to test that because that's a stupid mode to put on a gps drone <laughs> hey we're still going good so you know we got a good wi-fi feed again i just don't know why we've lost that feed twice let's go ahead and tilt the gimbal up a little bit we don't want to look all the way down overall this is a nice drone again don't two problems is that wi-fi dropping out i'm kind of worried here i think what i'm going to do here is i'm going to stop recording the video here so i know i've got some saved that way i know the apps told the drone to save it to the sd card because i want to make sure i get some footage what i do now is now that we've got it up in the air i can take let's take a couple photos now that we stop recording so guys if we i don't know if i got three video clips or just one but we should have definitely one now that the uh That I was able to actually confirm that I stopped the video. It's possible when I powered off the drone that those video clips did save and you saw them, but they didn't. It's because they corrupted because it was never given a proper uh, notification to stop recording. Now let's go ahead and just do a quick press and we'll take a photo. There we go. And it says TF photo. That means that it's saving it to the SD card. All right. Another thing let's do here while we have, so it looks like we have, it shows that we have three-fourths power on the drone. So we're getting a really good flight time. 
They rated it at 27 minutes. I was saying that I was hoping for maybe 20. Who knows? I mean, this is really good, but sometimes these batteries will show three fourths and all of a sudden they'll drop real quick. So we have to keep that in mind. Let's raise the gimbal up a little bit. What I want to do now is just do some gimbal testing. Let's just take the drone, rock it back and forth and see how well does this gimbal perform. So this is a good test, a really you know, hard 40 to 45 degree movements to really test that drone, that gimbal I should say. On screen that looks great. Now they had, Holy Stone does have an HS360 that has a, I had that drone, I can't remember if that's two or three axis. That gimbal was not perfect. Um, it was okay, but that gimbal looked different. It looked more like the gimbals that you see on the uh, F, uh, uh, SJRCs. This gimbal looks different. So I'm hopeful that maybe this one performs better, even though the SJRC gimbals usually work really well. But on that drone, I had some shakes at times. This one looks really good in the FPV feed. That's what I really want to test. Um, again, I saw a little, it, there might've been a bit of crooked horizon, but boy, it was very small. Um, it wouldn't be enough for me to be hugely disappointed because like I said, if it, it looked like it was always in the same direction. That could have been just natural elevation change. If not, you can adjust that in the gimbal roll adjustment. All right. And this is 4K at 30 frames per second. That's really important that we're not getting that bogus 15 FPS or something like some of these do. Because 15, you know, some of those drones to do that because it's really difficult to get, to save that frame rate. It requires more processing power on the drone. This drone's obviously got some muscle with the 30 FPS and EIS on board. Well, we got a good, I have, you know, I'm probably gonna jinx myself we got 15 satellites and I've got no issues though with the Wi-Fi here, just like I didn't on the first return to home. But boy, it, it does some, like I say, if it drops out, it's not the app losing connection, which many of these Wi-Fi apps will lose connection and you're not actually disconnected from the, the drone. Maybe the feed gets weak, but it's just, um, and there we are frozen. Nope, no, we're not. I thought we were, but it was just the gimbal is so good. I thought we were frozen. When it does it, the Wi-Fi actually drops out completely. I saw like a broken record. I know I repeat myself, but I'm trying to get the point across. All right, let's go ahead and do a uh, auto landing here over the helipad. Let's turn the drone around. I like to have the drone, the butt of the drone, I call it, facing me. It's pretty stable. It does get a little wobbly at times, but it's very small. And you can see it does some, if I can spit out corrections, as the drone is breaking. And that's common with these drones in this price point. But it's certainly nothing like some of them I've seen. This is actually a really nice GPS flyer. And there's some wind today too. So that wind is doing that. And let's do the auto landing. Kind of, it slowed and braked itself. That was nice. That's me correcting it. Of course, this is not a return to home. All right. So hopefully we got some onboard footage there saved, at least at the very end. And of course, the screen recording is only going to be at 1080p. And it's not going, the screen recording is just going to be your Wi-Fi feed. So I'm crossing my fingers. We got some decent footage there saved to the SD card to show you guys what this camera can do. But boy, that gimbal seemed pretty good. I hope I'm not misspeaking here and it actually wasn't but boy it looked really good so overall guys i'd have to give this a passing grade but i can't give it an a because of the wi-fi issues otherwise i could give it you know i'd probably give it a b and who knows you may not have those problems a b b minus only on the wi-fi i will change that score here at the end if i noticed a bunch of issues with the gimbal that i overlooked but for now i'm going to give it like a a decent grade um, again, this drone will be available on March 30th. I will have a purchase link down here in the description to it as soon as it becomes available on Amazon. But I'll include that code. So if you run across this video and you're thinking about this drone, make sure you grab that code. It'll probably only be good for a few weeks to a month, but that should drop it in the 280s range. That's going to make it cheaper than the, than the Mini SE. And if you're on a tight budget, 
this might be a decent option for you, um, assuming that that gimbal does work well. So consider the coupon as well. If you use the purchase link, it does help support my channel. So please do consider using the purchase link if you want to help support my channel. All right, guys, that wraps up the flight review for the Holy Stone HS720G. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. While you're at it, click the bell. That way you're notified every time I do upload a new video. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, side, side.